There's a pretty one, Ulysses. Hello Booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with a tag. This is the Gifts of Reading tag created by Anna Bailey Karras, who is a Booktuber. In fact, I'm her Booktube godmother, I think. She first came to Booktube through my camera flip thing a few years ago. And she is also co-host of a wonderful Australian book podcast, Books on the Go, that I love. And I will put a link to all of her particulars in the show notes, and she has tagged me. I almost missed it until I saw Britta's tag. I somehow missed Anna's original tag on December 16th. So it's not that Christmassy. Number five has a reference to Christmas, but that could be easily dispensed with, like you could just tweak it. So I'm going to tag people at the end, but and I don't think you need to try to, to get it posted before Christmas, because this tag is not that seasonal specific. So let's get started. Did I say the title of the tag? It's The Gifts of Reading Tag, and she has based it on a book called The Gifts of Reading, edited by Robert McFarlane, and that book, an anthology of, I think, essays about reading, sounds wonderful. I'll put a link to that book in the show notes, and do check out Anna's video, because she talks about that book at great lengths and names drops till I was salivating about all the lovely literary folks that were contributors. So, here we go. Question number one. What is your favorite book to give as a gift? Much like Britta, I am very careful about giving books, and I only give books to people whose reading tastes I am intimately acquainted with, and that's a very short list. That would be my mom, and I'm usually only about 50% correct in terms of what I give my mom. Britta, Leah in Calgary and Lindy in Edmonton, those I exchange books or I give, get rid of bales and stuff. But in terms of like birthday or Christmas or something like that, I don't even try to give gifts because I, let's see, what's, what's the next question? I'm going to be talking about receiving books as gifts in question number two, but because of experiences there, I just think it's far better to give somebody a, a gift card for a bookstore or online bookstore or something or cash and let them get what they want because it's kind of depressing to get a book which is your favorite type of gift in the whole world and it not to be a book that you're interested in reading or maybe you've already got it on your shelf or you know what I mean there's just all kinds of reasons why it's a practice to be avoided but I find that one of the books that I have given as a gift most is Barbara Pym's debut Some Tame Gazelle and I don't even have a copy to show you because I have read all of Barbara Pym's, except for with one exception, on ebook. But I give a paper copy of that. I have given two or three, even to Adam of Memento Mori, and I think he gave it three stars, which is pretty good. <laughs> I thought, yes. And that has usually landed because it's not a book that people are going to see. You can't find Barbara Pym in any bookstore. I mean, unless maybe you live in, in the UK, but it's not a thing that you're liable to pick up through browsing at a bookstore. And I am a aficionado. I am a devotee of Barbara's. And so that's a very personal gift. And I haven't ever had anybody come back and say, oh, that was awful. People that might not be quite their cup of tea, which is a good metaphor to use in the case of Barbara Pym. But, you know, usually people get along with it and appreciate it. And number two, what is a memorable book you have received as a gift? And the most memorable book gift I have ever got, and I've talked about it several times, but I love having an opportunity and a segue from Barbara Pym to this was a gift from a Brita to Boulder. And this is the Barbara Pym Cookbook, which was edited, put together by Hilary Pym and Honor Wyatt. Hilary Pym was Barbara Pym's sister. Barbara Pym was dead by the time this book was compiled, and her sister was, I think, even more of a cook than Barbara Pym, if memory serves. I actually had a paperback, reprinted copy of this, but this is the original, which has the same cover design as one particular series of Barbara Pym's novels, so it's beautiful. And then I opened it. It is signed by Hilary Pym. <laughs> you should have seen me scream when I opened it. I will probably never be lucky or rich enough to own a signed Barbara Pym. But having one that her sister signed, and her sister is quite a vivid personality in my psyche, having read three biographies of Barbara Pym, and I know quite a bit about Hilary Pym. Uh, I've 
about this. So thanks again, Britta. Number three, have you ever discovered an author you love through a gift? Now, I am a little bit picky about saying that I love an author until I've loved at least two books they've written. So the examples I have don't qualify quite because I have either not enjoyed a second book by the author or I haven't yet read anything else by that author. But these are three books that I loved deeply that were gifts. This one was a gift from Lindy, The Lost Garden by Helen Humphreys. And this is the first Helen Humphreys I ever read and I loved it so much. Well, this one I have now read two books that I loved by Helen Humphreys. That's right. Yes, I have read three books, two of which I loved. And, but this is one of the best novels I've ever read. And it was a gift from Lindy. And in fact, I later got a copy as a gift for Britta. And she loved it too. So, win-win. I have a full review of this. I will put a link in the show notes. And Lindy also more recently gave me the Student by Carrie Fagan, and this is one of my top reads of 2020. I have a full review of this. I will put a link in the show notes. I haven't read anything else by Carrie Fagan, who is a male Jewish-Canadian author, but this novel just got all the way inside me. I loved it. And finally, a present from Leah in Calgary that I thought was just kind of a one-off. Like I thought, why is she sending me this? But it's a collection of excerpts from this very gay architectural expert and writer James Lees Milne who lived almost the full span of the 20th century and he worked for the National Trust and these are fascinating brief excerpts from his diary about the various estates that he visited as part of his job and that doesn't sound very interesting which is probably why the title of my review of this book that just went up a couple days ago hasn't gotten many hits so far but the book is just fascinating so I'm not going to beg you to go watch that review, but this book was another top read of this year. I just loved it so much, and I'm going to read James Lee's Milne's multi-volume complete diaries starting next year. And number four, if a friend gives you a book, do you feel compelled to read it? This is why I think giving books as gifts is kind of fraught. I feel compelled, but I also feel like I don't want to read it. I, 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 I find myself putting off reading the book that was a gift for a long time. These books that I've just shown you were exceptions. But there are many books I have received as gifts on my shelves that I resist reading for fear of hurting the gift giver's feelings if I don't like it. So it's fraught, people. It's fraught. <laughs> And I notice sometimes that books I give as gifts, the recipient hasn't read it or hasn't commented on it or whatever. And so, yeah, it's a little bit awkward. And finally, number five, a book on your Christmas wish list. So this is the one that's kind of Christmas themed. But if you're doing this tag tomorrow or next week, we all have wish lists. We all have TBRs. You can still do it. I've been doing a lot of pre-ordering, so I'm not going to talk about anything that I've already pre-ordered or recently bought. I am going to instead tell you about a book that I probably will buy quite soon that I recently found out about on Twitter and added to my TBR that I had never heard of. And that is a novel from Estonia, and I'm not going to check the pronunciation. I think I can do it. Vargame, which is number one in the Truth and Justice Pentology. The author is A.H. Tamsar, translated by two translators, from the Estonian, Inna Feldback and Alan Peter Trey. It's got a quite fascinating cover. It's 600 pages, published in May 2019, the translation was. While the entire series seems to be an epic, this volume is about Andres, an Estonian peasant who purchases a small holding in a marshy part of the country. The name of that part of the country is the title of Vargame. And that sounds pretty interesting, to me at least. All right, so I'm going to tag people, and, uh, you know, because it's Christmas Eve when I'm putting this up, well, you might want to save it until next December, but I think you could do this any old time. It's about books as gifts, really. Question number five could be adapted. So I am going to tag Nell and Scott of Gunpowder Fiction and Plot, Doris of Aldi Books. I'm just going to pull names out of my head. Doom Antidote, Katie Books, Gagging for Lit, Matthew at Mayberry Book Club, and Kim of Middle of the Book March. And anybody else who's watching, you are tagged. Thanks for watching.